Hi, it's Dwyer, always, 1776.com, also digitalassetlife.com. Both of them are free sites. It's October 14th, 2024. It's a Monday, so we're doing a high-risk video. But first remember, nothing I say in this video should be construed to be investment advice. I want every listener to do their own due diligence, to rely on their own research and their own experts. Remember, the opinion you should follow after doing your due diligence should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. What I'm going to say, many people disagree with, right? I'm just sharing my views. I'm just sharing what I'm considering, what I'm pursuing, what I am watching, right? Not necessarily all of those things. So, let me just point out that on the eve of our election, which is ongoing, Right, people are actually uh, voting by mail as we speak. The economy is worse off than the intelligentsia is letting you know. Understand, the uh, Fed just cut uh, interest rates. Um, just understand, in my opinion, that was a mistake. Um, we have to let markets clear. Let me point out that that includes the labor market. In other words, if unemployment is starting to increase, we have to let it increase. I know that's not what people want to hear, but it's when you let markets clear that the market's able to improve. I want people to contrast Warren Harding's uh, decision on how to address a depression, not a recession, in the early 20s with F FDR's uh, feudal moves for much of the 1930s. I know that might not be the way you learned it in school. Let's strip away the propaganda. Just look at the numbers. Right, so here we're in a time period where unemployment ticks up a little bit, people panic, Suddenly, they're playing games with interest rates. Sooner or later, the debt market, what some people call the bond market, is going to stop listening to the Fed. Right? Understand, sooner or later, the market takes over. Not allowing markets to clear gives us things like the current housing market that's unaffordable for most people under 35 without an inheritance. Right? My point to you is let the market clear with an understanding that we're going to have some short-term pain. Pain is part of a capitalist economy. You're going to have cycles, business cycles. Right? Let the unemployment, let the labor market make the adjustment. Let's all be mindful. We can have a safety net. But let's not have what we have right now. And let's talk about what we have right now. Folks, the yield curve's still inverted. What I'm going to do is in the comment section, I'm going to have links to the yield curve. I'm going to have links to the Schiller P.E. ratio. So you can see it for yourself. Right? Much of the market is mathematical. So understand, the yield curve... The basic premise when the market is healthy is that you have to pay creditors more to lend you money in the longer term. In other words, you don't have to pay me that much if I'm lending you money that's to be repaid in a week or a month or two months or a year. As you would have to pay me if you're tying up my money for 30 years, right? If I'm lending you the money, there's an opportunity cost. I don't have the full use of those funds as the creditor for 30 years. So you should be paying me for the opportunity costs that I'm giving up, right? That I'm incurring 
by giving you my money for a longer period of time. You know the market's unhealthy when the curve's inverted, when shorter-term interest rates are actually higher than longer-term interest rates. That tells you that people don't have a lot of confidence in the future. Right? Something is severely wrong when the 10-year bond has a smaller interest rate than the one-month bond. Something's wrong. Well, let's go through the yields right now. The one month, 4.8%. The two year, 3.9%. Folks, that's preposterous. The 10 year, 4.1%. In other words, it's lower than the one month. Then the 30 year, 4.4%. Folks, that's lower than the one month. Right? It's unhealthy. These numbers suggest that we are either in a recession or on the verge of one. Let's talk about the stock market. Now, when you see fabulously successful traders, right? Investors, people who have made money in the stock market for a long time, selling billions of dollars worth of Bank of America stock, moving to cash. Think about that. They're getting out of the stock market and they're converting their wealth to cash. You know something's wrong. Because in bullish times, these very investors would be looking for rates of return above and beyond cash. Well, Warren Buffett is dumping. Bank of America stock has dumped it. Right? He has, for him, an unprecedented cash pile. Right, folks? You move to cash when you're expecting prices to fall when you think that you can get the same thing or something even better for less. That's what a lot of serious investors are doing. Well, let's talk about valuations. Understand the mean is the average, right? A median is just the midway point, but the means the average. We know the real price of stocks is the P.E. ratio, right? You know, how many years will it take the earnings to match the price of the stock? Well, just understand, the mean, historically, is 17.16. In other words, the price is normally about 17 times earnings. Right, the Schiller P.E. ratio currently is 37.38. In other words, stocks are, at least when measured by the Schiller P.E. ratio, twice as expensive as they should be, as they have been historically. Right, folks? The word that comes to mind is unsustainable. Don't be lulled into hearing about the greatness of the Trump economy or the greatness of the Biden economy. Right, folks, we're floundering. These are the current numbers. Again, I'm going to post links so you can look them up for yourself. Remove the middleman. Remove people like me. You look at the numbers yourself. You ask yourself. What has happened when the yield curve is inverted as it is now? What has happened in the past? Right? In the past, if you see inverted yield curves and then you see recession shortly thereafter, you'll know where we are. With the Schiller P.E. ratio, just ask yourself, when it gets this high, and folks, this is historical, what has happened in the past? 
How big's the air pocket? How big's the downdraft going to be? Right? Understand. You always have, as Jim Cramer likes to say, a bull market someplace. Right, folks? You always have a bear market someplace. You understand the entire market can't be at a 37 PE. Well, let's uh, talk about stock ideas. Let me just say, when rates drop, right, just understand that prioritizes your need for dividends even more, right? You want a rate of return. The Fed is concerned, as it should be, with a $36 trillion debt. They're concerned about the United States' ability to afford the debt service. So understand, they're cutting rates when you and I know rates should be increasing. You and I know we're in a different era than we were from the mid-1980s until just a few years ago when interest rates in general decreased. You understand, too, that the need for energy today, you have energy-intensive industries out there, right? Artificial intelligence requires data centers that require a lot of electricity, right? Electric vehicles, cryptocurrency, both require a lot of electricity. You understand that even if we reach a point that Elon Musk feels we might reach in the next two years, where artificial intelligence actually starts to exceed normal human intelligence. We're going to be constrained in the rollout by the limits we have right now on our energy infrastructure. Right? Understand, folks, energy isn't a tangential issue. Energy can literally constrain the ability of AI companies with a game-changing technology from actually rolling out that technology. So let me just say, at times like this, where the government is trying to control the price of money by cutting rates, right? They're trying to give businesses increased liquidity in part to employ more people. And let me just tell you, that's going to be a losing battle. Right? We'll see how it turns out. But in my eyes, that's going to be a losing battle. Right? Just look at coders today and how AI is taking away their jobs. Just think about how you're using apps to order food at fast food restaurants right now instead of talking to a cashier. Just think about how many people, for the older folks, lost their jobs pumping gas at gas stations when we went to self-service across the country, right? So you need to be thinking about dividends. You need to understand that stocks are so richly priced that you're not going to get the price appreciation that you would get when stocks are underpriced. So you need to get that income someplace. Let me just make one suggestion here. It's the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Index Fund, ETF. The symbol is VIG. Give it a look. Look at their holdings. Do your own due diligence. Let me also um, make another point, too. Right? In terms of capital gains, right, the unrealized gains that some politicians want a tax, right? A wealth tax. You need to ask yourself, what's going to appreciate in value? If you believe that it's Bitcoin. I've mentioned this before. One of the biggest holders of Bitcoin is MicroStrategy. The symbol is MSTX. Now, if you're a daredevil, they have a single stock ETF that strives to give you a 1.75x return on MicroStrategy's gains. In other words, if MicroStrategy 
goes up in value a hundred dollars this ETF is claiming it should go up in value the way it's structured dealing with options and um, instruments it should go up 1.75 times that right so if you get a hundred dollars off holding MicroStrategy this investment vehicle should give you hundred and seventy five dollars the symbol is M S T X again that's M S T X if you believe that crypto is the future if you believe that Bitcoin is the granddaddy of cryptocurrency and I believe they're possibly higher flyers I know Max Kaiser disagrees I understand the Bitcoin maximalist crowd disagrees I believe they're better plays in the digital asset world but but right if you are wedded to Bitcoin and if you feel that the time is now, and I myself think Bitcoin is going to ramp, today's October 14th, between now and the end of the year. Right? In part because of the election in the United States. Then just understand, you have different investment vehicles built around Bitcoin that you can trade from your brokerage account that don't require self-custody. I understand that's heresy too, not your keys, not your Bitcoin, but we're in an era where companies like BlackRock are running spot Bitcoin ETFs. In other words, you have credible players in the space who are very well financed, no doubt very well insured, right? That you did not have in the space a few years ago. So take a look at MSTX, take a look at its performance relative to MicroStrategy. Take a look at MicroStrategy. If you don't want the risk of a leveraged ETF, you can just look at MicroStrategy. They do use leverage to buy Bitcoin. But you can get a read on the historical price they've paid for Bitcoin and just how huge the upside will be if it if Bitcoin which is about $65,000 uh, as I make this video, jumps to $100,000. As has been the case historically in terms of percentage increase following halving a few months out. So let's talk about the energy grid for a moment. And let's talk about an innovative way that Amazon has found and understand, when I say Amazon, understand they're invested in Anthropic, which is an AI company. Of course, Amazon is perfectly positioned, not just in being a retail seller, but also in streaming. Right? Pay attention to all Amazon is doing. And of course, cloud computing is really the profit center of the company. Amazon is even involved in autonomous vehicles, autonomous driving vehicles. We'll understand the energy grid should concern all of us, right? It's an older grid. You have new, robust energy demand that's really unprecedented, right? Data centers really do require a lot of energy. So how do you solve the problem when you are a player like Amazon that uses a lot of energy? How do you solve the grid problem? Well, believe it or not, one way is by putting a data center right next to a power plant. Right? Understand, folks, if you haven't figured it out, atomic energy is the future. If you haven't figured it out, while we try to solve our electric grid problems, players like Amazon are putting data centers next to places like the Susquehanna Stream Electric Station outside of Burbank, Pennsylvania, which generates 2.5 gigawatts of nuclear power. Right, folks, you're going to have... And this is going to take time. 
This is where energy is going to constrain some of the things we do. You're going to have nuclear plants popping up all over the United States. You're going to have very well financed Goliaths like Amazon bypassing the energy grid by building data centers right next to atomic plants signing deals where they get their energy right from the atomic plant understand that's happening right now understand further that this is a solution that would solve big time energy problems for a lot of similarly situated companies so just pay close attention to the story right if you're an investor in anthropic or open ai um, if you're an investor in businesses that microsoft that are heavily into the ai space google gemini and if you um you know need a power source but don't trust fully the power grid and understand the disincentives no private company no publicly traded company has an incentive to openly say hey we don't trust the power grid to openly criticize the power grid because they don't want the scrutiny all they want is the energy and the profits that come from their energy intensive offerings right so just understand you the investor the burdens on you you the investor need to keep an eye out for these AI companies with major energy needs the moves they're making to put data centers right next to atomic plants as well as the moves they're making they have free cash flow folks to invest in atomic energy right just food for thought so let me just say uranium there's a uranium ETF in fact there are a few take a look at URA ETF right it's just the way to get diversified um, in the uranium space understand according to Yahoo Finance URA has a PE ratio of under 23 right the public which is enamored of AI which is a game-changing technology the public hasn't quite figured out that it's really a chain right for AI to be delivered to you there has to be a data center there has to be an energy source for that data center any weak link in that supply chain threatens distribution of the technology imagine what happens if they say hey AI has advanced to the point where it's operating at PhD level right understand some AI programs have already passed state bars in some of the hardest states to pass the bar in in the country so imagine if they told you AI now is at a place where uh, it's PhD level you can use AI as you would use an expert in the field but just imagine that there's a power shortage and there isn't enough energy to provide that energy intensive technology to most people folks we're on the verge of that understand China right now is aggressively solving its energy needs 
we, the United States, need to step that up. You're not hearing about that in the presidential election because both candidates want to sell you on the idea that they're tough on China, not that China is addressing certain needs better than we are right now, and energy is one of them. So, take a look at, it's called the Global X Uranium ETF. Again, the symbol is URA. Take a good look at that. Let me also close by saying this. Sometimes bad news that leads to downward pressure on stock prices creates opportunities. I want people to look closely at the Magnificent Seven. You know, it's counterintuitive. But believe it or not, in the Magnificent Seven, one of the companies with actually a more reasonable P.E. ratio is Google, a Goliath in the AI space. Just look at the usage of Google Gemini. Right now, Google, of course, is getting beaten up in the press because of antitrust litigation. What investors need to ask themselves is if Google is forced to break up, if Google is forced to, you know, do things like spin off Waymo, are you sure that won't unlock even more profit potential for investors? Right, folks, Google is in a lot of areas that are highly lucrative. More importantly, Google is actually better priced from a PE perspective than an NVIDIA. Right, so we need to start asking. I don't understand the question. Could you please rephrase it? We, we uh, need to we need to figure out why Google's PE is lower than the PE of some other Mag 7s. And we also need to Look at this and consider the idea that, number one, Google might win its antitrust litigation. Number two, even if it doesn't, what does that mean for investors? Does it mean losses or profits? You need to follow the Google story. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me finally say for the daredevils. This is the part of my own telecast that interests me the most. Take a hard look at, and granted, they've been non-performers. Alibaba, price-wise. Alibaba and Baidu. Right, folks, I understand things are looking deflationary in China. Right, I get that Malaysia recently uh, decided not to let Timu uh, sell goods in Malaysia in an effort to protect local businesses. I'm just telling you this is a mind-blowingly positive time to invest in AI, to invest in Alibaba, and to invest in Baidu. Right, by the way, Baidu, for those who don't know, uh, was even given permission here in the state of California to test autonomous vehicles uh, in Silicon Valley. Right, these are companies that do carry the risk of a uh, government that is more authoritarian than the United States. Right, you understand that Jack Ma went missing for a while, right? You get the idea that in China, things are done a little bit differently. But I want people to look at the addressable market there. If you believe that AI is groundbreaking, then now would be the time to load up on Alibaba and Baidu, right? Let me also point out too, that NVIDIA is a Goliath, rightfully so. They have much needed technology. They're not the only player in the GPU space. 
take a look at AMD. Right? In other words, if you believe that AI is a game changer like I do, to quote John F. Kennedy, a rising tide will lift all boats. Right? In that sector, my words, not Kennedy, is obviously JFK wasn't here for AI. But you need to look at that entire ecosystem. Right? If AI is a game changer, that's going to float atomic energy. That's going to float well positioned companies with the liquidity to arrange deals to build data centers right next to power plants. So they're not exposed to grid risks, right? And that's also going to flow such businesses internationally. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.